हेलो टीम वेलकम टू माय सेशन ऑन कॉफी विद प्रब एंड टुडे वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सेकंड फंक्शन ऑफ एन आई एस टी सी एस एफ टू पॉइंट जीरो विच इज़ कॉल्ड एज अ रिस्क मैनेजमेंट स्ट्रैटेजी थैंक यू फॉर शोइंग योर अमेजिंग रिस्पॉन्स ऑन माय पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू ऑफ द वीडियो एंड दैट बेसिकली मोटिवेट मी टू मेक दिस वीडियो माई नेम इज़ प्रब नायर फॉर मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन डू चेक माई लिंक इन प्रोफाइल एंड इफ यू न्यू टू द चैनल डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेलाइकन टू मेक श्योर यू शुड नॉट मिस माई फ्यूचर वीडियोज ऑन अ सिमिलर टॉपिक सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग अ टाइम लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट पार्ट so in my previous video we have done till the organization context okay and today we going to discuss about nist risk management strategy okay so if time permit you know according to the schedule i will try to cover all these particular function and today we going to discuss about what is the mandatory documentation required in risk management strategy and how to implement a risk management strategy in the organization with aligned with the nist framework thank you so as you know risk management strategy is basically part of the govern function and govern already have a more than six function the first is called as a organi uh, organizational context the second is called as a risk management strategy then we have a cyber supply cyber security supply chain management then we have a roles and responsibility and authority then we have a policy process and procedures and oversight so in this particular video we going to discuss about risk management strategy okay because this is basically very important it's very important okay so that's something we going to cover thank you so risk management strategy is basically very important uh, before we going to discuss about uh, risk management from nist point of view i would like to discuss about what is risk see risk if you go by the definition it is basically all about uh, likelihood okay risk is all about likelihood and impact so we say risk is basically the probability of something is happening okay that is called as a risk now let's take example i'm planning for one exam if i could not clear i will lose my particular amount example i'm planning for a particular certification which cost me 750 dollar okay i have not even appeared yet i might appear and if i appear if i fail then i might lose 750 it is not something i lost if i lost then it is not a risk it is basically called as a incident now company is planning for a new project okay which is based out in africa okay company is planning for a new project which is basically in in india okay so in india the opportunity high africa opportunity high because higher opportunity bring higher risk okay if project get failed if could not able to do, deliver the quality value that is the impact that is a risk we have predict here so risk is always come when we go out of discomfort so we need to reduce the risk i'm not saying we can protect 100% but here the goal is we need to reduce the risk by which we can able to grab the opportunity for that you need to create a strategy live example is when we onboard a vendor okay when you onboard the vendor it has a lot of repercussions okay what happen if the vendor is onboarded and then he send some virus to my system okay so i want to prevent that i want to reduce that so before we onboard we do the background verification that is called vendor risk assessment that is why risk management as a process is very very important in the organization objectives if you hire anyone if you fire anyone we do risk assessment but to do the risk assessment we need to have a risk management strategy always remember now if you go by the risk management okay so we going to discuss about what is threat what is vulnerability how it works how it correlate so that give you the better visibility okay so if you can see here uh, gv.rm we say so gv.rm which called governance risk management is the organization process for establishing communicating and using its priorities okay constraints risk tolerance appetite statement assumptions to support the organization risk decisions we, we just discuss that and the purpose of basically uh, the gv.rm is to ensure the organization risk management activity is aligned with the overall business objective and risk appetite now let's take example we using a one word here is risk appetite okay if you see my previous video i already explained what is risk appetite but just for reference let me explain you here um if you take example of 
risk so in risk we have a three functions one is basically called as a uh, risk uh, capacity okay so that is called first then we basically have a second one just give me a second uh, the second is basically called as a risk appetite okay that is called risk appetite and third is basically called as a risk tolerance okay so we have a three things here risk capacity uh, risk appetite and risk tolerance so if you take example of a uh, uh, risk capacity okay risk capacity is basically the maximum risk we basically willing to take to pursue the mission objective and all that that is called risk capacity suppose my objective is five thousand dollar okay so that is the maximum investment we can do from this we decided to invest two thousand dollar in a particular project that is my risk appetite and current risk in the project is right now one thousand five hundred dollar that is basically risk tolerance okay so whatever the initiatives we are introducing in this project it should not go beyond the appetite if it go beyond the appetite we apply the necessary control to bring the risk below the appetite but if the risk go beyond the capacity it cannot be recovered so it's very important for us to understand you know we need to understand all this particular process that is why you know to start any kind of an activity in the organization or any kind of an activity in the organization it is very important to know the risk appetite and it should be aligned with the business objective so with the help of gb.rm you can able to provide the number of benefit which can include your improved decision making skills definitely decision making skill is very important okay so when we say improve decision making we can able to clarify we can clearly define the priorities we talk about constraints we talk about the risk tolerance we talk about the appetite statement we talk about assumptions okay that's something we can basically take the second most important thing we basically talk about uh, uh, improve the uh, you know uh, improve your uh, risk exposure or reduce the risk exposure so it helps the organization to identify manage its risk which can helps to reduce the overall risk exposure third is improve the compliance so with the help of uh, G, uh, risk management strategy we can help the organization to comply with the regulatory definitely it is not possible i can able to meet all the re all the requirements so by the risk assessment we identify which one has a big impact which one has a low impact and last is basically called as a enhance the stakeholder confidence by demonstrating its commitment to risk management so organization can enhance its confidence to the system so more of the story is that it is an essential tool for organization for all size so by effectively implementing a gb.rm the organization can improve the decision making reduce the risk exposures improve their compliance enhance the confidence of the stakeholder so that is the advantage we get okay so now we're going to discuss about the requirements so in the nist in order to implement the governance or risk management we have some requirement the first requirement is risk management objectives are established and agreed to by the organization stakeholder second is risk appetite risk tolerance statement are determined communicated and maintained third enterprise risk management process include the cyber security risk management activities and outcome then we talk about the strategic directions that describe the appropriate risk response options established and communicated then line of communication across the organization is very important to establish then standardized method of calculating documenting categorizing and then finally we have a strategic opportunities which is used to identify include in the organization cyber security risk decision so these are the nist requirement we have by following this requirement we can able to implement the risk management of a governance in the organization so we're going to discuss now each and every phase in detail there is a one detailed course i'm planning to launch on 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 the nist grc where whatever the template i'm going to show whatever the process i'm going to show i'm going to explain with the documentation in my training okay but by this particular video you get a, at least 60 percent of visibility how to implement gv.rm in the organization according to nest thank you so we're talking about the first requirement of nist risk management dot gov is risk management objectives are established and agreed to by organization stakeholder okay so how to do that because definitely it's a question so what we have to do is we need to have an annual review and update okay so where we schedule the annual strategic planning sessions we review the current cyber security objectives we review the business objectives against evolving threats organization changes 
and according to that we can able to bring those changes this is something we are doing now let's take an example so there is a company which is called as a um, suppose aspirants okay so this is a company called aspirants okay so they have scheduled the two day strategic planning retreat so the outcome was we revised the set of objectives that consider the latest ransomware threats and the company recent expansion into the europe us and all that so this is the part which is called annual review and update so that's very important then what we did is we basically established the measurable objectives okay where we define the kpi for each objective so let's take example we as a part of information security strategy after understanding the organization context we understood the company want to build incident management process the company want to implement cloud security strategy okay so that is part of the annual review discussions so based on that we define the kpi for each objectives we have a user trainings <clears throat> and we also have a industrial control system to conduct the regular vulnerability assessment pen test okay so here we set the kpi to reduce suppose phishing susceptibility by 50% okay we also aim to reduce the vulnerability in the ics by 30% so this is the kpi we basically set so it's very important in order to so because question the the requirement of nisc say that risk management objective establish and how it is possible with the meetings only okay and how you basically agree with the help of measurable objectives only until and you don't define the measurable objective you can't implement and third it is very important to align with the senior leadership requirement <clears throat> because here the organization that's why the organization is basically organization is basically doing a quarterly meeting with the senior leaders to review and align on the cyber security okay in january we did this discussion where we need a incident management process we need a ransomware resilience process we need a cloud security process so today we are doing a meeting are we aligned on the same thing so it's very important whatever the objective you set okay whatever the metrics you set on a regular basis you have to align so same example is i am uh, i am having a meeting with the ceo of aspirants and with uh, we had a meeting and all the department heads was ensure that alignment of a new objective so we agree to include the cyber security kpi in the company quarterly performance dashboard so that is how we have alignment so if you have a strategic plan review you establish the objectives you have a senior leadership alignment so this is how you can implementing the first function of nist gov1 which is called risk management objectives so we have some documentation here so example like you need to have a risk management strategy document which is basically a foundation document outline the organization approach to managing cyber security risk that is the one document required and the second document is called a stakeholder agreement which shows the key stakeholder have review agreed upon the risk management objective and this something you can basically get in a minutes of meeting that's why we need a minutes of meeting in which we have approvals and everything along with that we also need a strategic planning documents which include your long term cyber security risk management objectives we also have a measurable objective document which detail talk about the quality of user trainings protection measures you know whatever we have taken and then we need a documents or minutes of meeting where the senior leadership agree on the cyber security objective so by this particular feature by this particular requirement you can able to meet the first requirement of nest so once we communicated agreed second step is after understanding the objective we need to set the risk appetite because until unless you don't set the boundary based on a capacity we cannot able to drive the things so come on if until unless i don't know what i what is the loss i have i cannot able to plan my action if i'm going for any project until unless i don't know the value of the project value of the business how much they going to invest i don't i don't i cannot implement so second step in the nist they say that risk appetite risk tolerance statement are determined communicated and maintained so in this the first step is determine the risk appetite so here what happen is we do the workshop with the stakeholders to understand the organization willingness to take on risk it's very important and in most of the companies we miss that and we also draft the clear statement which reflect their understanding let's take an example i did the same thing for i did the workshop for aspirants where i determined that okay the aspirants was willing to accept minimal risk in a customer customer data okay but could tolerate more risk in a non critical system so it's very important to understand the risk tolerance of the company risk tolerance basically mean level of risk they can take so if you take example of a startup they take more risk so risk tolerance is very high but if you take a example of established companies where have a dependency on uh, you know market and all that their risk tolerance is basically low so it's very important to understand the risk appetite risk tolerance of the of the company okay to understand risk tolerance how to set there is a detailed video i made okay how to build enterprise risk management you can check that video 
Second is we will try to check how can we translate the risk appetite to the tolerance statement. Okay, that's another important thing. So here we break down the risk appetite into specific scenario situation. We define the clear thresholds or we can limit on each scenario. So let's take example, we have a customer data. Okay, so we have a customer data. Let's take example, okay. So for a customer data, any breach, basically a risk goes above the 5%. Okay, it was if it go above the five percent, then it is unacceptable. And all the non-critical systems, if we have a risk which is above twenty percent, was tolerable, or within that twenty percent is tolerable. So this is how we setting the risk appetite to the tolerance. So five percent is basically the critical uh, sensitive data, and twenty percent is the downtime for non-critical. So we have to make sure it should be below that. So this is how you translating the risk appetite to the tolerance statement. Okay, I agree with the customer. We will start the consulting from nine a.m. So that is a risk appetite. Okay, 855 is the tolerance I'm setting. I cannot go beyond that. Okay, so it's very important to set the risk appetite. Okay, if you're working for the e-commerce, for them availability is the most important thing. So they want a 99.99% availability. It means 1% of downtime is okay to accept. This is the appetite they have set. Based on that, we set the tolerance. But on a regular basis, we need to refine that. Okay, so we have to review the risk appetite tolerance semi-annually according to NIST. And we have to adjust based on any significant incident changes in the threat landscape. So example like, you know, in I, I did the same thing. So we have discovered one minor data breach incident. And after that, we have reviewed the risk appetite and made necessary readjustments. So when you're creating a risk management policies and all that, set this expectation clear. It's very important. Okay. So we have some documentations like risk appetite statement as a document required, where we need to convey the organization stance on acceptable risk. Second is we need to have a risk tolerance statement, which translate the risk statement into a specific measurable term. This is part of a minutes of meeting. And we need a, some kind of evidence, which basically talk about they have reviewed the risk of tolerance on a semi-annually. So with the help of version history, we can able to track. So that is how we can able to achieve. Now moving to the next part, which is called as an enterprise risk management process, including a cybersecurity risk management activity. So how to integrate now cybersecurity in the risk management. So here what happened is we have integrated the cyber risk assessment to broader enterprise framework it's very important let's take example today vendor risk assessment so we have integrated the risk management in the vendor management also that's why whenever we onboard a vendor we say you check the confidentiality you check the integrity you check the availability in the vendor so this is how we have integrated the security in the enterprise risk management so we have to ensure that okay that cyber security risk are basically given a uh, you know, given an equal weightage along with other risk. Example like as aspirants, we have integrated the cyber risk dashboard with the enterprise risk management tool. So by this way, we get a holistic view. Okay. Second is, according to NIST, we need to have an inclusion in the planning. Okay. So as a CISO of the aspirant, he should be including all the enterprise risk management meetings so he can give his perspective because collaboration is the most important success of risk management function. Third, it is very important. You need to define the escalation criteria. Okay, so any risk with the potential financial impact, suppose above the 1 million, it should be set as a threshold. So this kind of a escalation criteria should be there. I'm not saying it is as per the NIST. Okay, so this is something is basically part of the requirement. Now, next part, which is basically called as a documentation. So what are the mandatory documentation is required here? Because that is very important for us to understand. So the documentations like uh, the first document is we need a ERM framework like ISO 31000, 27005. Okay, so we can have one detailed framework which cover the holistic view. Second is we need to have a cyber risk report. So periodic report that detail the cyber security risk and the management with the broader ERM context. Then we need a cyber security risk aggregation report that shows how cyber risk are basically managed alongside the other enterprise. We can also have an enterprise risk management plan, which is approved by the cyber security risk manager, or enterprise risk manager. And we also need one document which talk about the criteria. Okay, if this is basically happen, this is the person you need to contact. If this is happen, this is the person we need to contact. So this kind of a documentation is basically required to meet this criteria. Okay, moving to the next part, which is called as a GVRM 04. So we done with the appetite, we done with the documentations, we talk about the criteria. Now we are in a stage where we have to decide how to accept the risk. So this is a NIST GV.RM04, which talk about the strategy direction on the describe appropriate risk response option, establish and communicate. It's very important to have a process in place, how to respond to the risk. 
okay because if you go by the process let me show you something so if you ask me so first step is basically called as a uh, risk identification okay then second step is basically called as a risk analysis the third step is called as a risk evaluation and fourth step is basically called as a risk response so we done so before risk identification we talk about the context okay so far we talking about the context only in which we talk about uh, uh, setting the risk appetite having a framework <clears throat> okay free and tolerance and policies so these are things we have discussed now we need to also plan what is a strategy we need to have okay of re responding to the risk how we need to accept mitigate transfer and avoid so they talk about what is a criteria for risk acceptance so i will tell you something practical example okay how we basically drive the response in in the production state see if any risk okay suppose this is basically my uh, $3000 is basically my capacity okay i'm i'm talking about the very generic one okay and my appetite is basic so this is basically capacity and uh, we have appetite which is basically 1000 okay if my risk is currently above the capacity so in that case we avoid you know because cost of uh, risk is higher than cost of opportunity i need to pay from my pocket here why should i do that it is same like you know i want mercedes but i don't my salary doesn't allow me to do the mercedes, buy mercedes but if the risk is above the appetite i can apply the control to bring the risk below the appetite which can be treated so criteria for accepting a risk risk is basically so mostly we accept the risk when the risk value is below the appetite value where the impact is less but the opportunity high but we need to explain that we need to guide them we need to notify that in which condition we accept the risk because risk acceptance is mean residual risk risk before treatment is basically inherent risk and risk after treatment risk which is left that is a residual risk so it's very important to set the criteria so here the aspirants has decided let's say the same example we have defined what constitute the acceptable risk based on data sensitivity or criticality and we also establish the protocol when risks are deemed acceptable so if you take a same example from a consulting perspective i did i decided that okay any data breach risk concerning the customer financial data was unacceptable any any services unavailable and impact my customer it is unacceptable so this is the risk acceptance we have set then we also involve the cyber insurance decision which is called risk transfer okay when the likelihood is low but impact is high in that case we go for insurance so here we conduct the cost benefit analysis to determine the viability of purchasing insurance because purchasing insurance is basically the investment okay sometimes the premium is very high against that i'm not getting that cost of impact let's take example i i did the cost benefit analysis of aspirants where we purchase cyber security insurance covering the 10 million damage that's okay paying 500 dollar to get the 10 million is a big thing but paying 10 million to get 10 million impact value is not something as a good decision so we have to see the premium what what is the premium you're paying against that what is the cost of insurance you're getting the third important thing share responsibility condition so you have decided to okay outsource your email services to third party but establish a rigorous vetting process you decided to move the things on a cloud that is a kind of a risk mitigation okay so what documentation is basically required here is you need a risk response strategy that document that outline the organization approach to responding to identified risk including your acceptance mitigations then we also talk about the communication records where we having evidence that risk response strategy has been communicated to relevant parties okay we have a specific criteria for accepting risk avoiding risk so that criteria document should be have then we need to have a cyber security insurance decision document which talk about the analysis and decision on purchasing a cyber security insurance we also have a condition guideline for when the shared responsibility model is acceptable so these are the necessary documents we have that we need to consider now next thing is basically called as a line of communication so communication line for cyber security risk is very important okay in which we need to establish with the cyber security risk like suppliers and other third party 
So if you go by the according to NIST, so they say that you need to update the senior executives. So you need to establish the monthly or briefing. So in this case, you can ask for the documents, minutes of meeting record. And by this, you can able to ensure are they following that or not. But in this meeting, you will discuss the risk, key risk incident mitigation strategy. Okay, my session is that always talk about the high risk and medium risk. No one give attention to the low risk. And from a CISO perspective, you should give the monthly cybersecurity updates at the executive meetings. Then you can also have an interdepartmental communication, okay, where you can have a cross department meeting to discuss the cybersecurity risk. So suppose you discover one vulnerability or threat uh, or risk in a particular application. Okay, that application currently used by department one. So we cannot think only from a department. We have to see, do we have another department who support that application? Okay, if you consider only from one particular department, we cannot able to manage the thing because risk managed through the unified perspective. So it's very important. You need to have a interdepartmental communication. Okay, so you can ensure all department understand the roles and responsibility. So let's take example. In my case, what I used to do is we we do the bi-monthly cybersecurity newsletters, which ensure all department were informed. Third is third party communication, very important. So we need to establish the protocol, how to communicate the risk to third party without revealing confidentiality data and everything. Okay, you need to have a regular review and assess third party compliance. Suppose you're planning to onboard one vendor who going to provide you cloud services. Okay, before doing that, you do the assessment of that. So you as aspirant, we also introduce a portal where third party could report a potential cybersecurity risk and all that. Okay, so we have some necessary documentations that we required in each phase. Example, like we need an executive update schedule. So we need to have a, some kind of a timetable or plan for updating a senior executive on the organization cybersecurity posture. We can also have an interdepartmental communication plan. Okay, which talk about how the different department will communicate about cybersecurity risk. And we also have a third party communication protocol which talk about the guideline on how the third party should communicate with the organization about the cybersecurity risk. So these are the documentation summary we have. Now we're talking about the action. Okay, everything was on right now on governance level. Now practicality, how to assess the risk, how to calculate the impact. So we have a methods, we have a quantitative and we have a qualitative way to calculate the risk. Okay, so here we adopt a standardized approach like FAIR is there. Okay, we can train the risk manager in this approach. So same like, you know, what I did, I, I, I basically adopted the FAIR model and I trained the risk management team over the three, three months period how to use that. We can also create a documentation template. We can have a standardized risk register. Okay, uh, and make sure all the information because risk register is a live document which maintain the information about the ad live identified risk. Okay, so we should have a standardized risk register in which we can basically have all the documentations. We can also have a risk prioritization. So risk will be prioritized based on a potential impact. Impact can be from regulatory, uh, finance, okay, operations and likelihood of occurrence. So that should be there. And uh, we also have a risk category, okay, where we need to adopt the standardized set of risk category to ensure all risk are categorized appropriately for the easier analysis. So in my company, what I did is I have a five category system like critical, high, medium, low and negligible. So according to that, I did. And one suggestion is that if you check my risk management process video, you will get the visibility, how to set the prioritization, how to set the risk category and everything. So what is the documentation is required is we need a quantitative risk analysis criteria where we document the detail approach and formula that is a document that is required. Second is we need a risk register template where we can capture all the live risk. Third, we need to have a, some guideline document which dictate the business owner how we prioritize the risk and we can have a risk category list, a consistent list of the risk that we have identified. So these are the necessary thing which is required. Now, next important element, uh, you know, we need to consider is uh, strategy opportunities need to be identified in a cybersecurity risk decision. So it's very important when you're taking a risk, it means it coming with the benefits, it coming with some opportunity. So Make sure according to NIST, they say that, okay, you need to do this kind of an assessment where you can have opportunity identification. So we do the SWAT analysis, strength, weak, opportunity, threat. So we do the SWAT analysis, which basically reveal, okay, that, you know, the particular company cybersecurity posture could be a selling point in acquiring new business. Understood. So suppose I'm a part of a committee meeting, the company had decided for an acquisition. So we need to analyze the risk associated with that. We need to see is the, uh, like you know the business opportunity high or the cost of impact is high so swat analysis reveal that you know 
the posture and everything so we need to conduct the regular spat analysis from the focus on cyber security which nisc say that and we need to also highlight the potential opportunity arising from the cyber security practice based on that we can set the goal like example in my company also we set the goal to achieve 99% cyber security success rate or 100% availability so you need to define some kind of a uh, goals but it should not be uh, non realistic so regularly review the progress also with the help of kpi and uh, the company also decided to invest in the new experiment so we need to make sure every activity what we do it should be have a positive impact so we need to adopt the balance approach so the documentation which is required is we need a opportunity identification guide like is the company is using any swat analysis okay do we have any stretch goal document which lists the ambiguous cyber security goal and do they have a process to track along with that we need to also document the risk management plan where we going to talk about calculating and documenting a positive risk so this this step is basically more from a risk governance so do let me know how do you find this video and shall i continue the same series okay and that further functions based on a video based on a feedback i will basically work on my next video thank you so much good day bye